Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video, we're going to learn some more about Mathematica. Specifically, we're going to focus on three main aspects. We're going to learn how to assign values to placeholders. We also want to learn how to define functions that we can use ourselves. After that, we're going to learn some linear algebra stuff. We're going to learn how to define vectors and matrices and learn some of that notation in Mathematica. And then finally, we're going to introduce a new command to take a matrix and put it in a row reduced echelon form. And then we're going to look at an example of using this command. So to start off with, let's talk about assignments and functions. In Mathematica, we can assign numerical values or other values to placeholders. Like for instance, A. Let A equal 3. When I hit Shift Enter and evaluate that cell, it defines A to be that value of 3. So later, if I just type A and evaluate my cell, it will give me back that value of A. Now, one thing to note here is if I delete that cell where I've defined A equals 3, that does not clear out the stored value of A. In fact, now if I rerun the cell with A in it, once again, it will define it to be 3. So the only way I can clear that definition is if I use the command clear. If I clear my value of A, and now I try to run A again, now it comes back as undefined. So just because these stored sentences disappear doesn't mean those stored values clear. But I can not only assign values to you know, a placeholder like A, but for instance, I could also store symbolic things. For instance, if I looked at the plot of sine of X, plotted from x equals 0 to 3. I could look at that plot, but I could also store that whole plot to the value a. And future use, now if I just type that value a and rerun that cell, I will get a new plot. So I can store other things, give other things names other than just number values. The next thing I want to talk about is functions though. What if I want to don't just store a, a static value to a, like 3 or like this specific plot, but if I want to store a function value to some name. For instance, I want to define a function. I'm going to call my function f, f of x. I use that little underscore when I'm defining my function that I'm building. And there's two ways I can define functions. I can use colon equals and then put the uh, expression, the function definition on the right-hand side. For instance, my first function might be x squared plus 3x. I'm going to hit shift enter to evaluate this. And now to use my function f, the function I've created, I simply type the name of the function, and I put the argument inside of square brackets, just like I would define any other mathematical function. So what is f of 2? Well, 2 squared is 4, plus 3 times 2, so plus another 6 would give me 10. f of 3 would be 18, and so on and so forth. Now another way I can define a function is by getting rid of that colon equals and just putting equal. Here is another way I've defined the function. Now notice that it actually has given me that output. And once again, it looks the same if I evaluate f. It looks like nothing has changed. But there is a subtle definition between defining functions with colon equals or just equals. When you define it with equals, the right-hand side of that function definition is evaluated directly. And it gets stored as my function. Whereas if you use the colon equal, this right-hand side does not actually get evaluated until the function is called. So there's really no difference when I have x squared plus 3x. But for instance, if I looked at a different function, maybe I want to plot the sine of t from t goes from 0 to x, for instance. And so here, the argument my function x is actually giving me the range with which I'm going to plot this function. Now I've stored that function value. And if I run f of 2, it should give me the plot of sine from 0 to 2. And sure enough, it does do that. But if I had defined this function without my colon equals, it gives me an error message. Because it says, I'm trying to evaluate that plot right away as soon as you evaluate this function definition. And I don't know how to, to evaluate sine of t plot from t equals 0 to x, because x isn't a real value. So in this case, we don't want it to evaluate this right-hand side right away. Instead, we want to wait wait to evaluate that right-hand side until I'm actually going to call the function. Now, in most cases, the applications of defining your function either way won't, won't change our actual use. But there are some cases, like when I'm defining the function to be at this plot, where it could be important. All right, so that's all I'm going to say for assignments and functions. Let's look at our next topic, vectors and matrices. So we're going to do vector and matrix stuff inside of Mathematica. And so how do we define vectors in Mathematica? Vectors are defined to be just a list of values. So for instance, if I want to talk about the vector 1, 2, 3, I'm defining this vector v 
to be one, two, three. I just say V equals and give it this list of values. This list of values is enclosed in curly brackets. I'm going to run it. There's my vector V. I could certainly define another vector, the vector one, one, one. And then mathematical, let me do vector operations like V plus U. And sure enough, it will give me the vector two, three, four. So that's how I'm defining vectors in Mathematica. Now I want to define matrices in Mathematica. To define a matrix, I can do it several different ways. I'm going to create a matrix and I'm going to store it to my, my value A here. Now one way I can define a matrix is as a list of rows. So I'll have a list of rows. My first row will be a list of numbers. For instance, 1, 1, 1. That would be my first row. My second row would be 2, 2, 2, for instance. And my last row could be 3, 3, 3. And if I hit Shift Enter, it will store this matrix to A. Now if I evaluate A, it will give me my matrix back, but that's not very satisfying, right? If I look at that, I really might not be able to see the matrix like I'm used to seeing them in a textbook. If I want to see that in terms of in that textbook style, I can use a command called matrix form. Matrix form. Put A as the argument of that command. and It will give me that more traditional output of the matrix. Now I can maybe see that matrix a little clearer or more in a more familiar fashion. I've seen them in textbooks. Now another way we can define matrices, and uh, an advantage of this method is we can define it just as we are used to seeing them in this kind of traditional matrix form, is I can take my matrix A that I want to define, and I'm going to use a parentheses, and I'm going to start typing in that first row. So I'm going to type in my 1, and then I'm going to hit Control comma, Control comma to go over one entry or one, one column over. So I'll enter my 1 value here. Control comma again for another one. And now when I start a new row, I'm going to hit Control and Enter. Now I'll go to this new row. And now it's already created all three of those cells, so now I can just use the over arrow to go from position to position. So I can go 2, over arrow, 2, over arrow, 2. A new uh, row, Control Enter, 3, over 3, over 3. And then I can close with another parentheses. And now I can just evaluate this cell, and it will store that matrix once again. Give me that same definition. So those are the two different ways I can define matrices in Mathematica. Now what do I want to do with these matrices? One thing I might want to do with them is take a matrix and put it into a row reduced echelon form. And so I have a command for that. I've already stored my matrix A to the value A, and now my command is going to be row reduce. I can see here's a second option on my dropdown. Oops, row reduce. And the argument of this command will just be the matrix that I want to show in row reduced form. And so if I row reduce A, and this is the matrix. Now once again, that's a little hard for me to see. It might be more comfortable if I'm looking at it in matrix form. So I will simply surround that output uh, with matrix form. And sure enough, there is the row reduced echelon form of that matrix A. So lastly, let's put this all together in terms of an example. Here's an example of a problem I might want to do in my linear algebra course. I want to ask, does the linear system, and here is my linear system, does this linear system have a solution? Well, to solve that problem, I might want to take a look at the augmented matrix. So my augmented matrix in this case would look like 1, control comma 2, control comma negative 3, control comma 2. That would be that first equation, the first row of my augmented matrix. I'll hit control enter. The next row would look like 3, negative 2, 2, and 4. And the last row would look like 2, negative 4, 5, and 3. I'll close that up with parentheses. I'll evaluate that matrix. And what I really want to do is look at the row reduced echelon form of that matrix. So there's row reduce. I will row reduce A. And once again, that result might not be clear looking at it in this form. So I can always enclose this result with matrix form. Now I can see in more of that traditional style. And if I look at this row reduced form of this matrix A, I can see that because the right column, the far right column, is a pivot column, that there are no solutions to this linear system. So that's how I can use this command to determine whether there's a solution to this linear system or not. And that concludes this introduction to linear algebra with Mathematica. Thank you.